Today I'm going to show you how to maximize your profit in Big Ambitions. I'm making over half a million dollars every single day at the moment and this formula you can just keep using it and using it and growing your business more and more. From the early game your first strategy in order to grow quite big should be to start a clothing store in Midtown. Now if we go to Market Insider I'll show you exactly why this is but if we click through the different districts here over on the left hand side we get information about the demographics of different areas. So for example Hell's Kitchen we can see here is mostly middle class with some upper class and very few working class people. And this refers to how much disposable income they have. So if we go to Midtown, we can see that 94% of people are in the upper class. Now, what that means is they're going to have a lot of disposable income. And when you combine that with decent demand for clothing, then you're laughing. So you can see here, for example, there's a few different clothing items here. They're all reasonably uh, on demand, but also they only have a couple businesses that are selling them, one of which is mine. Now, when I first started in here, the demand was about the same. Every clothing item was 40% plus in terms of the demand for that clothing. And the number of providers was actually 3% businesses. So when I first started, I was actually the fourth business to be competing. So that gives you an idea of what sort of level you need to be looking at before you start your business. Now, if I open up my Bizman, you can see I've got a number of stores here, but this clothing store is by far the best one in terms of the amount of income that it provides me. So let's talk first of all about how we get to a stage where we've got enough money to start that store. And incidentally, the store is just here. So let me go ahead and I'll run inside and show you what this looks like once you set this up. So you can see it's a fairly large store. We have four different checkout counters and we've got eight racks for each different clothing item within the game and then we've got like you know changing rooms decorations all that sort of stuff so you are looking to get to a stage where you can rent a building like this and fit the whole thing out and the cost of doing this entire thing was about 100 to 150 thousand depending on how lavish you go with some of the furnishings so how do you get to that stage in the game where you've got the money to do that well don't forget obviously you can take out a loan for a big chunk of it but i actually didn't need to take out a loan and with you follow the strategies i'm about to tell you then you won't either so the formula for making money in this game guys is actually more simple than you might think you open up your market in Insider. Then if you left click the demand column, it will sort by demand and you can see how in demand each different type of product is. And you want to go ahead and do this for all the different districts until you find something that ticks all the boxes. So the criteria that I set for myself during the game that I followed is as follows. I want the average demand for the products I sell to be 50% or higher. Now the reason I say average demand is as follows. If I click demand on all of these different regions, you'll see that donuts are incredibly high in demand across all of them and they also don't have any providers. However, if we go to the help section up here and we look at the different business types, you'll see there is no such thing as just a donut store. Closest we come is the coffee shop, but in order to sell donuts there, we'd also be expected to sell these other products too. And if we go to Market Insider and we sort by demand again, although donuts are in high demand, we have to scroll down quite a way before we find other things that are in demand. So for example, a cup of coffee here is only 38% and there are 13 other businesses that are selling that. So obviously you're not going to make much money out of that. In croissants, they're at 40% and there's 12 other businesses. So there's really no point. So you want the average demand of all the products you're going to sell in your store to be 50% plus and you want the number of providers to be no more than four. But ideally, the lower the better. And if you do that and you research each of these districts, then you will find that sort of setup. So in my game right now, if I were looking to do this, if I go to Midtown, I have found a product that ticks all these boxes. You can see here cheap flowers. They're not only 98% in demand, but they're actually increasing in demand as well. And the other thing you'd sell, of course, what we're looking at with cheap flowers really is a florist, is the expensive flowers down here. And they're at 83%. And there's only one business that's actually selling these products. So immediately we've got an idea here that we could start a florist. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open a florist now in this game and take you through step by step because this is just the first step. Okay, we've identified the demand for the product. We know where we're going to sell it and what we're going to sell. But there is going to be a whole process and it's easy for me to just tell you like you can do X, Y, Z, but I'd rather show you and show you how much profit we're going to make by doing it this way. So what we're going to do is go into Google Maps and make sure that everything is unchecked over here on the right hand side. Then I'm going to go ahead and select Midtown so I know what region we're looking at. And I'm also going to go up to the top here and make sure I can see the retail buildings that are rentable at the moment. So when we click on a business, we get a different number of statistics. So we get, for example, this traffic number here, the size of the building, and then the capacity of that building. Now, what you really want is for the traffic number to be as high as possible and also the capacity to be as high as possible. If you're renting a bigger building, that will typically mean you'll get the higher capacity, but you will be paying more for it. So if I go ahead and open this up in Bizman, then we can see how much money we're going to have to spend in order to rent this shop. We can also click this button here to preview it. And that looks like it's about as big as I'd want a florist to be because I'm only going to be selling two products in there. So any bigger and it might just be a little bit empty when we go inside. Now emptiness isn't necessarily a problem, but I'm just saying like it's perhaps a little bit bigger than we need if we go much bigger than this. So we need to look around at all the different buildings that are available to us. And what we want is the traffic score to be as high as possible versus the number of people that are able to be served in that building. So you see this one right here is the same size. If I open this in Bizman and do a preview, you can see that the store is the same size, but it's got toilets and it's also got a storeroom. And because of that, it means that the capacity is actually lower. We can only serve 30 people 
per hour and also we've got a traffic index of only 25 so this building is not as good so we're just going to keep looking at different stores here until we find a really good number where we've got like a lot of traffic coming by and a lot of people that we can sell to having looked through i think i've found a really good spot here for a florist which is this building right here the traffic index at 49 is very high now the capacity is a bit low it's only 15 people per hour but that being said we are only selling two items which are flowers and the good thing about this for opening bizman is it's a really cheap store right here i mean you can literally do this early on into the game at this sort of price the daily rent is also really low and by only having the capacity there of 15 that's the uh, customer capacity it means we'll only need one staff member which also saves us money on overheads if i do a preview you can see this is a small store but that's perfect it's only going to be a little florist so i'm very happy with this building so we're going to go ahead and rent the building and start a new business which will of course be a florist then we need to give it a really funny inventive name just like that <laughs> And we're going to go ahead and start this business. Now, I always like to go into the settings, first of all, and get my branding going on. Now, obviously, you guys do whatever you want with this. I'm just going to do mine. I'll be right back. Now, if you're at the stage where you're trying to grow your business on this game and make more money, I'm going to assume that you know how to set up a shop. And I'm not going to go through the step-by-step -step process of that. Obviously, there is an in-game tutorial that shows you how to do this within the first few steps of that tutorial. If you would like to see more content on this game, though, then please do subscribe and I will make more videos on Big Ambitions. So I now have a basic setup for my florist and I just want to run over a few of the important points here that you guys need to be aware of. So first of all, what you want to do is go into Bizman and click on the florist or whatever it is you're doing, of course. And over on the right hand side here, just check that everything is in the green. If it's in the green, it means you are reaching or exceeding your customer capacity. And that's what you want to do in order to maximize the amount of profit you can possibly make. Now, there are some things I highly recommend that you invest in. And one of them is this item right here, which is the loudspeaker. Now, I'm going to put that down a little bit so it's not a full volume, but this will play music when people come into the store. Now, this one right here is actually 300 because it's the one that's sort of standalone but you can also get a desktop one which is just 80 it's a bit smaller and it basically has the same effect the other thing is the trash bin that's also not too expensive and can be quite useful so you buy the loudspeaker from the ika store that's definitely not ikea and you buy the trash bin from the appliance store which is i believe the aj pedersen appliances but if not it's the other one but you guys will know that anyway now with all that set up i also have a lot of stock in here if i go to manage the storage you can see we've got four expensive and six cheap flowers waiting to go now i want to talk briefly about the interior designer stuff so if we go ahead and click that you guys will know that i have seen this before and you can select all different items for your walls and floors now if you do some of this lower end stuff you'll still get complaints from customers that it's not looking great in here so if you do the lower end stuff you're going to have to upgrade later on to the more expensive stuff anyway as such i recommend waiting until you can afford the more expensive stuff and then doing that so i'm just going to go ahead and put in the most expensive stuff because i can afford to do so um this will like it'll make a small impact but it, every little helps in this game so once you can do this then make sure that you do now there's no real need to do the storeroom at the back so we're just going to worry about the shop area here and you can see there that's going to be about 12,600 to all the floors and walls of a shop of this size if you want with the interior designer you can also do other things so once i'm on the interior designer section i can go ahead and right click on different objects and i can select from a range of colors here if i want to change the color of for example this desktop so you'll see there it's now black we could also make it like this pinkish color or like red or whatever we want and you can even go in here and add a color and add literally any color that you desire so i'm just going to go ahead and make it black and yellow because that just looks kind of cool so those are going to be the colors that i go for and once you're done you just set the colors and boom that is done and you can even do this with the different shelving in your business if you want to make it look kind of cool and right down to even like the plants and stuff like that so most stuff in the game here you can actually change the color of if you want to now this isn't something that's going to make a huge difference it's more of an aesthetical change but i just thought i'd mention it another thing you can do on the outside of your store is if you go ahead and right click you can hit change sign appearance and you can do a different type of sign if you want to do a different thing for your business so with the business now set up in terms of all the product placement and stuff like that let's talk now about the operational side of things so go into your bizman and into the business in question and when you're setting what up it is important that you do your marketing so you really want to get this marketing to 100 because it will pay back more than that 100 percent in terms of the sales that you will make now it's important here that you use your options wisely and tailor them to the type of business that you're doing so for this one here i'm going to start with the mccain's e-marketing rather than city ads because it's a smaller sort of business and we don't necessarily need a huge billboard so we're going to select our uh, business right here i'm going to do a large campaign confirm that and then we'll just escape out of this and go back into bizman to check what difference that has made so you can see with that alone we're 80% so what I'm gonna do now is go and call up the uh, city ads and we're just gonna do the very small uh, campaign here so the small billboards and put that up as well so this will now be at probably over 100% it will only show as 100% but I mean like we've probably more than fulfilled it but I'd rather do that than the opposite you can also check this because we're spending 500 a day on this and we could say well if we took this campaign away what happens and you see there we can do that 
and still have the full amount of advertising. So obviously that's what I'm going to do. I've just cut my advertising amount in half each day and I'm still hitting the 100%. So next we need to get some staff in and I recommend that what you do is just take pretty much anybody to start off with. So I've had one candidate come in here from the campaign I ran yesterday. I'm just going to hire this person and get them started. The reason for that is what I like to do is go ahead and train up them uh, with my HR managers. So everyone here has got plenty of people assigned to them. And once the florist has got all of its staff in place, I'll make sure they're all assigned to a HR manager too. And I then train them all up to be 100%. So we want to just get anybody in straight away so we can open our business and make it start taking money. And then we can always like train them up or we can fire them and hire better staff in the future if that's the way we want to go. So when your staff are in, what you want to do is the particular priority should be paid to the weekends because you can take more money on weekends. However, in my game right now, it is currently Tuesday. So that's where I want my focus to be. And what I want to do is go ahead and open this store and have it open from now right up until midnight and just put this guy ADL in right here in the uh, cash register and extend his hours out so he's working the full time. The reason being is we can start taking money and we want to do that. We don't want to wait until the weekend. We can start right now and having this person in here will do that. And now we have a staff member in a new store. We need to make ourselves a new uniform for that store as making sure that all the staff are wearing a uniform will slightly increase your sales. So we can right click right here and down on the uniform right here, we can go ahead and configure the uniform presets and make a new preset for our florist. Now, I really don't think it matters what you actually make the uniform. As long as they have a uniform, then the customers are going to be happy. So you can pretty much do whatever you want to do with this, whatever you think looks good for your particular store. And then once that's done, you just go ahead and save the presets, go back to your staff member and give them the florist uniform or obviously whatever you've done. And that's all taken care of at that point. So here we go. We have our staff member in and we have our first customer coming in. And you can always keep an eye on these guys because if there's something that they don't like in terms of the customers, then a little speech bubble will appear and it will tell you what it is they don't like about the store. Now, we're not getting that because we've got it all configured. We've got the right number of cash registers. We've got the interior decorations done and we've got the loudspeaker down here as well. Now, they did have a little complaint there. It's kind of hard to see, but as they left, they said about the bad customer experience because they have bad customer service because we don't have the best staff here yet. Now, that's always going to be the case. It's hard to hire people that are good. You do need to just train them up. So that's something that does take a bit longer to do, but you can still be making plenty of money while these guys are being trained up by your HR manager. Now, if we look at the Bizman oversight for this store, you can see that all this stuff right here is currently at 50%. And that's because it hasn't had a day yet to sort of take effect. So when you change things like your interior or you start cleaning it up if it's dirty or whatever the case is, it will take that day of it being like a new interior before it starts to update on the Bizman schedule. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and just sleep through this entire day and we can see then how well we've done when we wake up tomorrow morning. So I've now woken up and it's the next day. And if I go to my contacts here, then we can see here that we have had a load of new staff members come in. So I'm actually just going to hire most of these if they're like anywhere decent in terms of customer service and then we'll sort out our schedule. So now on Bizman, we go back to the florist, we look at the schedule for today and we're going to, of course, open up today and figure out all of our staff stuff. So what I like to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select five days a week, which are the five busiest days, because Wednesday through the weekend is the busiest time. And we're going to have it open from eight in the morning up until, let's say, 10 at night. And once this has been set, I'm then just going to click the auto fill button down here and see what it's looking like. So with that done, we can then start looking at what our options are here. So for example, Lewin Carter, zero hours per week, but wants to work full time. So what that tells you is we can actually open till midnight and maybe be open 24 hours a day on those five days. I'm going to also fill once again and see where we're at. Okay, with that done, Lewin's still not open. So now we can open the five days, uh, sorry, the seven days a week and go ahead and also fill again. So now we just go ahead and fine tune and get to a point where they're all happy. So if we hover over Lewin, he's not happy. The full time there is in red because he's not working full time. So I'm going to go through and change that so that we have all of our employees happy. And if they are not needed, then we will fire them. So right now, all of our employees are in the green and we are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I've gone ahead and uh, fired one employee that was surplus to requirements. Now at this stage, what I'm going to do is go and clean my business. So I do that for the first couple of days myself, uh, especially in a small shop like this. It's really easy to do. And in the meantime, I'll set up a campaign to start hiring a cleaner to come in. Incidentally, if I go to the Insight now, I told you it takes a day to update. So our pricing and our interior are both at 100%. Cleanliness could be better because we need to sort that out. And customer service will improve over time. If we open it up in Econo View, then we can see here how we did yesterday to so day 156 and our total sort of profit and loss. So we made a profit there of two grand, which isn't terrible for one day. Obviously, you want to get that to be a lot more, and I'm going to show you ways that we can fine tune that to get it to be more. Okay, I've given this business a bit of a clean, and what I'm going to do now is look again at the uh, inventory and pricing here of everything. So you can see here, my stock count is getting kind of low for the expensive flowers, and even the cheap flowers, they are starting to sell. So my first port of call now is to go and restock, because that's how you make your money, of course. You really don't want to ever get to a stage where you're running out. So you want to keep an eye on this, especially in the early days of your business, when you're starting a new business, because you're not really going to know exactly how much stock you're going to need. So I'm going to pop now down to the uh, wholesaler and go and buy myself a load more stock. And then once I'm back, I'll show you another way that we can increase the amount of profit that we're going to earn each day. Okay, so back on Bizman and over to the florist, I can show you here now that if I go to my inventory, we've got a lot more inventory now of all the stuff 
that we're selling. Now, the next thing to do is on Insight, if your pricing is at 100%, then you need to increase the prices. It's as simple as that. You're doing very well with the prices right here. So put them up a bit and see if you can get a bit of extra money out of it. So what I recommend you do is you look at the retail price and increase it by about 10%. So you can see here, $40 is current. So another $4 on top of that. And if it's 25, that'd be 250. So we're going to round it up to $3 and put it up to 28. And we're going to do this every single day until the pricing drops down below 100%. And then we might need to reduce the price a little bit until we get that opportune amount. Now, to give you an example of how this can work, if I go to my clothing store right here and we look at the inventory and pricing of the clothes. First of all, the pricing is set at 100%. So they're all very happy with the pricing. But if I look at the inventory, you can see here the market price, for example, they're 127. But we're getting an extra $20 per item. Now, that $20 per item, if you times it by the amount that we've sold in the last seven days, that's going to work out at over $30,000 extra that we've earned just by having that increase in price. Now, once you start doing that for every single item, and obviously then you know, every time you're selling these items day after day, week after week, this adds up to be hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars over the course of the game. So this is something that's really important that you do. You get your pricing just right, and then you sell it at the right price where you're going to be making the most profit. So I've gone ahead and slept through the night. And if I go to Bizman now and I take a look at my florist, then on the pricing, we're still at 100%. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and increase the prices. So I'm going to put this one up now to $50. And this one right here, we'll put up to say $32. And we'll see how that goes when we review it tomorrow. So this is an ongoing process that you do until you figure out the right price. You just keep tweaking it each day until it gets to the point where it drops below 100%. Okay, so we've had a couple of cleaning applications come through here. We can have a look. And to be honest, a part-time cleaner will actually be enough for this small store. So we're going to hire this candidate and set them up. So on the uh, schedule here, we've got Alfred Collins. This will be our cleaner. So he wants to be part-time, which means he's willing to work a maximum of 30 hours per week. So across the seven days, it works out about four hours each day. So what I'm going to do is just put him in four hours each day from seven till nine and 17 till 19 each day. And you see here as well, I'm missing a cash register person. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that as well. You want to make sure obviously that people are working all the times that you are open. Okay, so I now have the schedule completely filled for the cash register and the clean has been set up as well. And everybody's in the green and happy. Now at this point, what you want to do is go to Bizman and into your HQ and find a HR manager that doesn't have employees assigned to them, or at least has a gap for more employees to be assigned. And we're going to go here and assign, and we're going to fill this up. Now, I'm going to keep doing this until all my businesses are full. But if you keep on top of things, then each time you start a new business, you'll only have to do it for that business. So basically, all these sub for more, that's all the florist people, we want them all assigned to a HR manager. So here we go. This is the final number of employees, the final uh, HR manager. So they're now all going to be trained up. And again, make sure that you have this here set to 100% for each of your HR managers managers so that they're training all of their staff up to that 100% level. This is a much better way of training up your employees. Otherwise, you have to unassign them from any business so they're not working for you at all and pay to train them on a daily basis, which is quite expensive and you're not getting them working for you. But with a HR manager, they're training them up and at the same time, they're still working for you. Plus, it's cheaper. So it's actually just like a huge win in the game. The other thing to do is go to your employees and sort them by the business they work in and then find the business that you just set up. So here we go. We've got sub for more. Now, you want to do this once you've got all of your employees there. So the cleaners and everything else, they're all there. And and also once you've already made your uniform, you can then click here to with the selected and assign the uniform of the florist. There we go and confirm that. Now all your employees will have the correct uniform and this will slightly help your sales as customers do like it when uh, your staff will have a uniform. Okay, so the florist has been running for about seven days or so right now. And we can see here the average daily income is at almost $10,000 every single day. And with the pricing, it's now at 92%. And if I go to inventory and pricing, this is like where we ended up. But obviously this might be different for you depending on what it is that you're doing. But in terms of the insight, I customer service is slowly starting to increase over time. So that will slowly increase sales over time and everything else is pretty good. If it's 90% plus on the pricing, then we're pretty happy with that. Now at this stage, once it's been running for a week, what we can do is we can see in the last seven days, how many of everything here that we've actually sold. So with these numbers, what I know is that my delivery each week, what I'm going to need is about 750 expensive flowers, about 700 paper bags and about 550 of the cheap flowers. I might even round that up to 600. You always want to order a little bit more. So you've got like plenty of stock and you don't sell out. So then we just go to Bizman and go to our HQ and our purchasing agents. And then you just need to find whichever one it is that sells the stuff that you need. So for us, it's going to be United Ocean Imports. That's where all these flowers are. So we'll assign this to uh, warehouse number two, just like that. And my paper bags, I actually order in a ton of them from a different uh, place because we just order them in bulk. So I've got so many stores. Now you see from here, I actually order in uh, some of my expensive jewelry from these guys as well. The cheap jewelry I get elsewhere because it is cheaper. So you always want to check different places if they sell multiple products. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit cancel order but the amount you're currently ordering stays in there. So all we have to do is add the extra stuff in. So we'll go for, let's say, 600 of the cheap flowers and 750 of the expensive flowers and assign them to my warehouse number two. That's where I want them to be. And you can see there, the next order is going to come in the next delivery at day 167. So that's a few days away. We might need to do one last top up ourselves.
ourselves before we rely on it being automated. But we're going to go ahead and hit the order and then we're going to look for our logistics manager of warehouse number two. And do we have any destinations left? We do. So let's go ahead and add in the sub for more shop. You see, I've got a ton of paper bags, as I said. So we'll keep a minimum stock of paper bags. We'll say like a thousand in the store. That should do us nicely. And then I'll go ahead and put in 500 for the amount of stock we want for each of the flowers because we sold like roughly 700 of each flower. But that is, of course, over seven days. So this means that a delivery will be made about sort of twice a week or once every 10 days, something like that. So now that's done, eventually this will now be automated. As I say, we might need to just check the stock that we currently have here. We're running a little bit low. So I'm going to do one last fill up myself. And then after the delivery comes in in a few days time, it'll be done forever. And so once that's done and this is now automated, your business is free for you to just leave alone and it will just keep making you money passively. If I go on to Bizman, you'll see that's what all these other businesses are doing. I've got businesses here that are making me hundreds of thousands of dollars on average daily income and I don't have to do anything for them. And so this is how you progress through the game. And once you first start out in the game, you might have businesses that start earning you thousands or maybe tens of thousands as you build every single day. And as you have several of them, then it'll start to really add up. But over time, you get bigger businesses and you start selling more and more. And of course, the more that you do that, then the more your profit increases and you just keep following that formula. And in the early game, as I say, the goal is to get to a point where we've saved up 100 to 150,000 to start our clothing store. And what you can do is actually start with a bit less than that. Let's say you're earning about 15, 20,000 a day. Once you get up to like 60,000, you can start investing that in the clothing store and you can get it open and selling products. Then you simply add to it over time. And by the time you get to that stage, you'll know how to set up. So you've got all the right tools and you hit your capacity of all the different uh, orders that you need for all the different products and that sort of thing. So as for the clothing store criteria, like I said, you do want to start this in Midtown. So we're going to go ahead and select that first of all. And then you want to see what different retail buildings are available to be rented. Now, this here is the building that I rented and you can see the traffic index is only 31. It's a very big building though, and does have the capacity to serve 75 customers. So I'd say this is sort of the minimum you want is 30 plus on the traffic score. And you definitely want to be able to serve the 75 customers because you want this big shop that you can sell a lot of clothes at. That's how you're going to make a lot of money. So there are other options and depending on how your game's going, they might be available. So for example, this building that's just across from my building right here is the same sort of thing, similar size and customer capacity and very similar in the traffic score. There's some other buildings to look out for as well. If we scroll back here, you can see this building right here has a good traffic score and still has the other criteria met. And there's a building right here as well that has a pretty good score. So there are a few around that you need to look for, but do go for those big buildings and make sure you got the 75 customer capacity. Now, if I open one of these up in Bizman, you can see that the initial sort of amount you're going to need is going to be around $30,000-ish before you can start renting that building. And so that's why I said if you've got about 60,000, that's when you can start. So you've got the 30K then to sort of invest in the building itself and then 30K to start investing in the cashiers and product shelving and the products and stock. Once you do that, you just will start making a ton of money in the game. It's a really good progression. And this isn't just me that's done this. I've seen quite a number of people on Reddit and other YouTube videos where they've done this and it has worked.